Hello and welcome to Through Our Eyes, a program brought to you by the Department of Community and Cultural Affairs. Today we are here at Four Ways In with an interesting guest who is going to share with us some of his memorable childhood experiences growing up in Bermuda. And so this is a wonderful opportunity to visualize, to hear, and learn about Bermuda back in the day through the eyes of Mr. Sinclair, Leroy Emmanuel Augustus. Good day, Mr. Augustus, and thank you for joining us. So happy that you could be here. Thank you. Now we're going to get started talking about your childhood. Where did you go up? Frizzle Hill. Frizzle Hill? Pembroke, yes. Pembroke. Was that for the majority of your childhood? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And you were in the home with your parents, and you had siblings, did you? Yes, two brothers. Two brothers. That's it. Tell me the names of your parents. Who were they? Um, David Augustus and Mary Augustus. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. And tell me about your brothers, your two brothers, their names. Alfred Augustus uh -huh. and David Augustus. Okay, so Bermuda knows about Alfred yeah. and David Augustus. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the neighborhood that you grew up in, in Frizzles Hill. What was it like? Who else lived in that neighborhood? What were some of the connections of the people? Uh, the neighborhood was just it was like a family neighborhood, really. Uh -huh. Everybody got along with everybody else. You, you, you allowed to be anybody else's house. Really? Yeah, right. It was open like that? Open, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it came to eating in, at your home, mm -hmm. what was that like? What was family dinner time like? Everybody sat down at one time. You had to be there on time. You had otherwise, to be there? Otherwise, you missed you miss your dinner. Oh, dear. <laughs> so definitely wanted to be there one time. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so were you the youngest <clears throat> brother, the older brother? Where do you fit in? I'm the youngest. You're the youngest? Yes. Okay. Okay. And what was school like for you? Where did you go to school? The Central School at that time. Mm -hmm. Now it's Victor Scott. Now it's Victor Scott because you yeah. could just wander down the hill. Yeah. And make sure you were on time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and your brothers, you and your brothers, what kinds of activities or fun did you do? I did a lot of swimming. Hmm. Yeah. Where'd you go swimming? Down at the um, North Shore. Uh huh. But down, down by the, by the Dempster Dock. Okay, yeah, so. Dempster Dock. Swimming was jumping overboard. That's right. Let's swim the buoy sometime. Really? That yeah. far? Yeah. So, what did you do to keep your stamina up? How did you manage to swim out that far? At that time, you had a lot of energy. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. You used stronger. Yes, you used stronger. <laughs> so this took place during vacations or school time as well, or? Yeah. Like every day. Every day? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so this was a fun activity. Exactly. Did you and your brothers ever get up to any pranks? Not that much, no. No? no. You were well behaved, no. good? Yeah. So far. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your parents, because you were born in what year? 1927. 1927, yeah. amazing. So what was it like in Bermuda then in 1927? It was, the neighborhood itself like was a close, it was, everything was closely knit. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew everybody else. Sometimes you, you, you people go out, leave the vendors open. Nobody knew where the keys were. The door was never locked. That certainly sounds like people trusted their neighbors. You know, but if you, you, if you leave the clothes on the lines, somebody sees it's going to rain, they pick your clothes and put them on your bed. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they would take your clothes off the line put and them on your bed. put them on your bed. So yeah. the doors were locked, yeah. nobody was kept yeah. out. No. Yeah. So those were some wonderful times right. and it instilled a kind of trust. Mm -hmm. What other values did your parents teach you and your brothers when you were growing up? They always work hard. Work hard. And mm -hmm. what, you, what, you do, what, you, what you want to do. That's it. Mm -hmm. you know? And obviously they taught the importance of being honest yeah. because the neighborhood was based on yeah. trust and honesty. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. where, are, where are the people in that neighborhood uh, that had lived there a long time as well? Yeah, most, most people you knew. Just, just from growing up, 
they were there, you know, when okay. you grow up and they answered. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I remember you saying that many of them, some of them at least, originally came from another island. That's, most of them came from Jane St. Kitts and Nevis. Ah, yeah. were they relatives or did they all just no, happen to? No, it just happened to be, that's all. Uh-huh. What happened, a lot of people, you, you come up from St. Kitts. Right. Come up here, you make us. You make a give it, give a good living up there, and uh -huh. you call somebody else, and they they come up there. And yeah. that's uh, by that's, word of mouth, yeah, yeah. people would share. Yeah. Oh, listen, it's yeah. it's they're doing well here in Bermuda. Yeah, exactly. This is yeah. where I'm living. Yeah. This is where you want to be. This is where. So, did any of them work at the docks in dockyard? My father. Your father. Tell me about your dad. What did he do? He's a, he's a mason. He was a mason. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where did he work? Right here by Volvo, we had already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Was he an independent contractor or did he work for a company? He was an independent contractor. Yeah. Very good in those days, yes, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where else did he work other than being uh, a Mason contractor? Mm -hmm. What else was he involved in uh, doing? Well, after he knocked off for work, uh -huh. he'd come home and jump in his carriage. Uh-huh. And go to go, go to, to the um, wharf to hack his, his car, his, um, his uh, carriage. His carriage? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that was like his second job. Yeah. He would take his carriage and... Yeah. How did he use his carriage? You know, uh, did he use it just for the tourists or for transporting goods? Which for tourists. For tourists? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many years did he do that? I was say about... 10 years. Okay. Yeah. And did you help him with that? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So where did you go to school? I went, then I went to Berkeley. Then you went to Berkeley. Yeah. And in those days, did you have to get a scholarship to get into Berkeley? No. No? Mm -hmm. So it was free tuition? It wasn't free. You had to pay for it. Oh, you had to yeah. pay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you were there the entire time? I was there for four years. For four years? Yeah. Yeah. And then, then what? What did you do? Then I um, left, left. I went to work at the recorder building as a printer. As a printer at yeah. the recorder. Yeah. Tell me about that. That yeah. must have been interesting. Yeah, it was. What did you do there at the recorder? I, was, I used to run a linotype. A linotype. What? That machine makes lead, little lead pieces. Uh huh. And when then they then they put it in the paper in the form of a. Of a and all the only writing comes out on it, and okay. they, they put it paper by paper, by paper you know, okay. page by page. Page by page. Yeah. And, and then, you, then they put it on, on the machine. And where was, machine. where was the ink? Was the ink in the printing machine? Ink's in the printing machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's just all lead. It's all lead. Yeah. Okay. It yeah, had lead, but it had all the writing on it. Oh, I see. <laughs> Interesting, though. Yeah. So then who came up with the stories? Because you ran the paper in the machine, <laughs> but who wrote the stories? Ira Phillips. Ira Phillips. Yeah. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So the process for the printing, mm -hmm. you started with the, the yeah. lead, yeah. and you had to arrange it, yeah. the letters. Yeah. And, and the, you, you, you arrange the letters, and you put a, a line around it okay. to hold it together. Okay. And then, and then you, you, you so one section here, another section there, and different, different stories. Okay. Then you put it in the, in the, in the page, it makes up one page. Uh huh. Then you put, the, you put two pages on the machine at the same time. The machine does it. Okay, so the machine could handle two papers, yeah, yeah, two pages, two pages at, a at, at a time. Yeah. That's a long process, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you did that for how many years? How many years were you? About, that's about three or four years. Okay. Was your father involved in the recorder? No, but he's, he, he's one of the, he was one of the show owners. He was? Yeah. So was he one of the founders? Yes. That's fascinating, Mr. Yeah. Augustus. Tell me what, tell me how that came about, your father becoming one of the founders of the recorder. But, but, but six or seven of them got together. Uh-huh. And they decided to run a newspaper. Run a newspaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they saw a need for a newspaper. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What led them to wanting uh, to run a newspaper? Well, I guess a lot of people printed these that I didn't want to see in the other paper. Okay. <laughs> 
So they were being yeah. socially active then. Yeah. They recognized that there were some stories right. that weren't being told in the other papers. Right. And so they said, well, yeah. let's open our own. Mm -hmm. That's a great entrepreneurial mm -hmm. spirit that they had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what else did your father get involved in? He got involved in the recorder. Yeah. He helped to get that started. Mm -hmm. Were there other ventures that he got started? Yeah, he was involved in the co-op store and millionaire. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fast. Did you follow in his footsteps with recall to the co-op store? No, no, I don't want that. <laughs> uh, any of your brothers? Did any of them? No. Yeah. But the same business mentality that he had, yeah. we can see mm -hmm. in your brothers because yeah. they got the funeral yeah. home started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. So uh, a family of... Now my, my brother, he started off as a mason. He started off as a mason. Yeah, but what happened, my father said there are too many masons in the family. Mm. I, have, I have uncles, George, Daniel, uh -huh. Samuel, and they were all, all Masons. Okay. So he said he wanted to take something, do something else besides being a Mason. Ah. That's why he decided this way better way to get to become an undertaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So your father yeah. was very instrumental in steering him yeah. in another business venture. Yeah. yeah. But definitely, your dad had a mind for. Um, yeah. business yes, right. and doing for yourself mm -hmm. rather than and employing yourself rather than being mm -hmm. um, hired by other people. Yeah, and he was one of the fathers who started Dampshire at Grapefruit Club. Your dad was? Yeah. Really? He was father, yeah. Why did they start that? What was the purpose of the Devonshire Recreation Club? Yeah, that, you know, where, where the Devonshire Recreation Club, Club is now. Yes. It was, it was a garden right there. Okay. That, that's where they have the field now. Okay. It's a garden before. And so they wanted to start yeah. this club. Right. Yeah. Why? Well, that was just to keep the neighborhood good. Okay. <laughs> community minded. Yes. Yes, and keeping the, the yeah. whole idea of the yeah. community and yeah. the fellowship among, amongst mm -hmm. the people in that community That's and right. building on that. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they played which sport there? Was it only football or? Yeah, they do, they do, that time they only played cricket. Cricket? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Did you play? Yeah, I was. I played. I played with Andrew Rex. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm enjoying chatting with you. <laughs> Let's just take a break for a minute, mm -hmm. and we'll come back and talk some more about Devonshire Recreation Club. Thank you. We will take a break and come right back and continue talking with Mr. Augustus on this show through our eyes. Water conservation tips with Mr. Drippy. You know, Mr. Drippy, by regularly inspecting your tanks and plumbing for leaks, you'll save a lot of water. And you can keep the raft for the beach. Conserve the water. Welcome back to Through Our Eyes. I'm your host, Heather Whalen. And here with me at Four Ways In is Mr. Sinclair Leroy Emmanuel Augustus. And we are talking about his fond memories of his childhood growing up in Friswell's Hill. You'd just been telling me about your dad starting Devonshire Recreation Club. And they started there playing, which sport was it? Cricket. Cricket. And you know, I thought it was football. No. So when did they bring football about in? Yeah, about 20 years ago. I guess. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And were you an avid <coughs> um, player of either cricket or football? Yeah, I played cricket for Devonshire Rec. Side, uh huh. And I played football for Pembroke Juniors. Oh, okay. Football side. So, a sportsman. Yeah, I tried. You tried. You <laughs> and your brothers. Yeah. So, you and your brothers going to um, Victor Scott School, then mm -hmm. it was called Central School. Mm -hmm. You went on to Barclay Institute. Mm -hmm. What were some of the fun things that you and your brothers did? How did you get to school? Walk. All the time? Yes. Walk to Barclay. Uh huh. Walk down the um, graveyard. <laughs> was that scary? Walking no. through the graveyard? No. No, of course not. No. Did you play any pranks on each other when you're walking through the graveyard? No. No? You don't have time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always late. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. What was the transportation in Bermuda during those days? Carriage. Carriage. Horse and carriage. Horse and carriage. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The trains. At train, some yeah. point, yes. the trains were introduced in the, yes. what, late 1930s? Yes, mm -hmm. Okay, did you guys ever ride on the train? Yeah. yeah. Free. 
Oh, now that sounds like a story. That little twinkle in your eye, you rode free. Tell me about that. Well, the, the conductor was on the front of the train and we jumped on the back of the train. Without him knowing? That's right. How often did you do that? Well, maybe once, once, once a month, something like that. Uh, so that was one of those little yeah. things that you and your brothers yeah. used to yeah. have fun trying to trick the conductor, yeah. get on the train, yeah. go for a ride. Yeah. How far away would you ride? To Hamilton. To Hamilton, yes. and then back. Did your parents ever find out? No. <laughs> Best not to let them know that, right? So when you left Barclay, mm -hmm. where did you go to school after that? I went to printing school. That's where yeah. you learned about yeah. the printing yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Linotype. 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 And, and where was that school? In New York. New York, okay. So how long were you there in New York? It was 18 months school. 18 months? Yeah. Great. Did you miss home? No. No? It was a chance for adventure. That's right. Did you find it difficult to adjust to the weather in New York? Yes. Compared to? Compared to Bermuda, yes. Mm. And so was that the only challenge yeah. in mm -hmm. you adjusting, was mm -hmm. the weather? Yeah. yeah. But you didn't miss family? No. Okay. Talking about family, your parents were raising three busy, robust young men who had healthy appetites. Mm -hmm. And in the 20s and 30s and 40s, um, it, it must have been kind of tight. No. That does say everybody had a garden. Yes. So you change, you, and your potatoes grow, and the other person have something else grow, and, and you just buy it between each other. Smart. It didn't really cost anybody anything. Very smart. Your time, put them in. So, not quite the official community <laughs> gardening that we have now, but yeah. certainly it was the sharing. Yeah. Everybody had had a garden. Everybody had a garden, so yeah. you share. Yeah. 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 At, at, at Christmas, my father had pigs. Uh huh. So he said, "Kill the pigs, you just share it, share it around the neighborhood." Didn't cost them anything. Yeah. yeah. And then the other neighbors would share yeah. something with him. That's so right. people shared. Yeah. That was one of the values then that your That's parents right. taught That's right. you. That's right. to be of course, the living wasn't that, wasn't that high. Wasn't right. that high. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. importance of sharing yes. amongst your family and the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. What else did your parents, what other values did your parents um, instill in you and your brothers? Certainly <laughs> hard work, because you all worked hard. Oh, well, we worked hard. We worked hard for a long time. Uh huh. Being honest. Yeah. Tell you, look, you gotta work hard when you're young. So you can relax when you get old. You know, that's, that's wisdom. Yeah. Work hard while you're young. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? So that you can relax when you get old. Yeah. You put yourself away every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's so true. That is very wise. Yeah. That is very wise advice. So you understand what you need to spend. And your parents taught you that as well. That's right. Being that's right. mindful Mind. and not spending a whole lot of money. And I passed it over to my children. Good. That's right. Good. Excellent. And so, not getting into debt unless you needed to. That's right. <laughs> Very smart. Very smart indeed. What else did your parents teach you? How about your mother? You told me um, a bit about your dad. What was your mother like? She was, she was, she was, uh, those days, mothers didn't go to work in the house. She was just a... Uh, she worked in the home. Mm -hmm. She taught us how to cook. Mm -hmm. So, I am. I do, I, I do I still do all the washing. You still do all the washing? Yeah. <laughs> so she taught you to be self-reliant. That's right. Excellent. That is really good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. We are going to take a moment's pause and we will be right back through our eyes. Welcome back to Through Our Eyes. I'm your host, Heather Whalen, and we are here today with Mr. Sinclair Leroy Emmanuel Augustus. And we are chatting about his work experiences and his life growing up in Bermuda. 
So Mr. Augustus, after you finished the printing press, you were not done working. Where did you work next? Well, I worked, well, when I finished I worked for Berlin College of Maryland uh -huh. as, yes. as a painter. Okay. And then after that I went and worked at the prisons. You worked at the prison service? Yes. Interesting. What was that like? It was eye-opening. In what way? How was it eye-opening? Well, you, you, you meet a lot of different people and you, you try to persuade people to you do things that are right. Did you find that the advice you gave, did they listen to you? Yes, the majority of them did. Good, yeah. good. And so, did you uh, maintain communication with um, the inmates after they had left? Yes, I did. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? That was, it was beautiful. I still, I still have the same respect from the, from the inmates that I had before. Really? So because you showed an interest in them right. as people, mm -hmm. they appreciated that. Yes. That's, from you. that's a father image. So you were a father image to yeah. them. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. And how did you involve them after they left um, prison? What kind of involvement did you have with them after they left? Now, while they were in prison, uh -huh. you'd be six Six, three months before they are released, uh -huh. you had to help you get, make sure you got them a job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when they came out, you have a you had the job. Uh, lined up for them. Yeah. Lined uh -huh. up for them. Yeah. I just I kept in touch with them after they came out of prison. It's when I, they, they stuck to their job. So you would follow up. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And that let them know that you really cared about them. That's right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And how long did you work at the prison service? Fifteen years. And you did that with all of the inmates that you were responsible for? Most of them. That is I incredible. I did that mostly at the, at the senior training school, not, not at casemates. Oh, you were at the senior yes. training school? Yes. Where was I that guess. located? In St. George's. In St. Okay. But that was, and that's not something you had to do. That's not something no. the job required you to do. Mm -hmm. But you did it because yeah. you wanted to yeah. help them. Yes, right. What motivated you to be so kind and so caring and loving? They were my people. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Amy, you're, that's lovely. That's mm -hmm. lovely. Mm -hmm. You were extending kindness that's and right. love beyond just your yeah. immediate family. I treat them as if they were my, my, my sons, you know. Nice. Yeah. And they must have felt that that's because right. you maintained that contact with them right. afterwards as well, mm -hmm. follow up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe that's something that you got from your father, yeah. you know, the importance of family, mm -hmm. but also showing love to other people that you yeah. meet. That is really important these days. It is. That's right. Tell me why you think family is so important. Well, I mean, every every Thursday, my my daughters and me we get together every Thursday and to help supper. That's it. Lovely, yeah. and you yeah. share. Yeah. And what do you talk about during mm -hmm. those times when you get mm -hmm. together? Find out how I, I I like to find out how they are doing. Really. Uh huh. You know. Uh huh. I can help in any way. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I know they must love you. And they must appreciate that, mm -hmm. because at this stage, you're still looking out for them yes, right. to find out how you yes, can right. help them. Right. Lovely. That is such a, a good act. You just pass on what you got from your parents. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And that, you, you got hope, that from your parents. You just hope they, are, they were passed on to, to their, their children. Their children. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Teaching those values that's that right. are instilled mm -hmm. from one generation to the next. That's right. Very important. And you're that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Family is very important. That's right. When you finished at the prison services, mm -hmm. did you um, continue working? Because I know you're a very robust and still uh, yeah, active I, man. Well, so I worked, while I was at the prison, obviously, I worked, I worked with my, my brothers at the, the funeral home. Okay, the family business. Yes. Fantastic, yeah, I love well, that. I've been there for over 50 years now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. Yeah. It's great that family, mm -hmm. that your family has that business mm -hmm. and that you all are intimately involved mm -hmm. in the running of that business. That's right. That is good. I know your parents will be proud. I took a ride around my, my, my nephew took over from his father. Uh huh. Then I have my great nephew, he works in this. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. It is a family business. Yeah. That is wonderful. Now, as we are about to close, are there any 
pearls of wisdom that you would want to share because you have lived such a full and rich life. Any advice you give? Just keep together as a family. Keeping together as a family. And you can, you can, you, you do a lot that way, you know. You That's right. totally agree with That's you. Right. Maintaining family unity, right. and sometimes there are challenges in maintaining family unity. Yeah. How, do, how do you deal with those challenges? Well, you, certain things you can't do anything about, so you just leave them alone. Okay. <laughs> that reminds me of the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. God grant me the wisdom to mm -hmm. accept, accept the things I cannot change and the courage right. to change the things I can. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, my last question to you. You see what our world is like today. Mm -hmm. And you know what Bermuda was like when you were growing up. Mm -hmm. In our current world today, is there one thing that you appreciate that we have today that you didn't have back then. Is there anything? No, nothing stick out that much. No, no nothing that sticks out. Stick stick okay, so even though we are living in a modern world today, mm -hmm. there's nothing that you love that you didn't have back in the 30s and 40s. In the, in the 30s and 40s, that I had everything I needed. You know what? That's, that's wise. You were able to function with yeah, what you had. That's right. That is wise. You, know, you don't change for, for that, you know. You just go home and do what you're supposed to do. That's, yeah. there you go. Well, <laughs> that is wisdom itself, mm -hmm. Mr. Augustus. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for our listening to Through Our Eyes with Mr. Sinclair Leroy Emmanuel Augustus. He has been our guest today here at Four Ways Inn, and we are thankful for them for allowing us to be in this facility. We hope you'll join us next time.